States and everyone talking about that story here in Australia as well and uh, how deep that uh, corruption kind of ran. Now, our next guests are harnessing big data to make cities work better. Navalytics gives town planners real-time insights into a location so they can make informed decisions. And they made some pretty big waves last night on Your Money's River Pitch program. Check it out. We, we need to grow our team and it's tough in Australia and we want the best product people and we want the best data scientists. Okay, could you tailor your presentation a bit more towards that? Why wouldn't you lead in up front saying we're actually we're, we're, we're not here for investment? What we really want to do is attract the best and the brightest. Like be up cool. front because yeah. you're just like, you're the David in the Goliath story. Yes. First up, I'd like to invite Jess from Neighbourlytics. Yeah, so if you did miss it, that's a little bit of what went on on River Pitch last night here on Your Money. I'm pleased to say Jessica and her co-founder, Lucinda Hartley, join me now from Melbourne. Welcome to you both, ladies. Now, first of all, congratulations on making it through the next round. We can see how happy you were from that clip. Um, but just take us back a step and talk us through um, exactly what Neighbourlytics does. Jessica. Yeah, sure. So Lucinda and I are both from an urban design background. We've spent almost two decades each working in designing the cities that we all live in. And we've become really frustrated by how hard it is to find out about the human side of cities. Town planners are responsible for making the places that we all live in and have a fundamental impact on our lives, on our social connectedness, on the local economy, on our sense of belonging. And as town planners, it's often very hard for us to measure and understand the success of that work and really see the impact of the decisions that we're making. Uh, and we thought there had to be a better way to get data about local places and we were inspired by the advertising industry if you like which are using Facebook and Google and all sorts of other digital platforms to know how they position marketing and billboards around the country and we thought town planners needed that, that data so we created a platform, uh, a tool really that allows city planners in real time to see what's going on in local neighbourhoods so they can really understand the local identity and the personality of the places that we're shaping. Right, so what kind of data uh, are we talking about, Lucinda, that digital information? Um, yeah, what, what are kind of insights and where, where are they drawn from? So Google, Facebook and the rest, but what do you, what do you get out of yeah. it? Yeah, look, every day we are leaving millions of data footprints behind about the places we go and what we value through our social media accounts and smartphones. So Neighbourlytics harnesses 10 to 15 different sources, sources you'll know like Google, Google Maps, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, mm -hmm. Zomato, TripAdvisor, and we layer that information to create real-time pictures of what's happening in the city, where people go, what they're experiencing and the general levels of use. Right, so an example I saw is like, you know, a mother's group meets every Tuesday afternoon, same park, how do they get there, where do they all go to afterwards, that kind of stuff, what else? Yeah, so what you what you see with your eye is you see a cafe and a park, but what you don't see is that it's really busy between 2 to 4 on a Saturday afternoon and there's a whole lot of activity that you might not be aware of, like the soccer club that meets, the parents group, the, the startup that's up on level 3 but they've only been around for a couple of months. So we get a full picture of the level of activity that's happening uh, across different seasons, why a neighbourhood might be different on a Wednesday or a Saturday or in summer and winter. Right, and so that data hasn't previously... I mean, I'm surprised that that data isn't available prior to you guys for town planners who are planning these cities. So why? What, what was the other data before you guys existed? I mean, <laughs> as, as urban dogs. designers, what were you kind of working with? What stuff? Yeah, sure. So, so without being too hard on the town planning industry, um, you know, before the digital revolution that we now live in, it was very manual and expensive to collect information about how people are using places. So we as practitioners would be standing on the footpath recording observations about what we see, which is great, but it's very impractical to do that all day, every day, when it's good weather, bad weather, when daylight savings starts, when school holidays starts. So observational data is a big part of the town planning mm. practice. Also, government data data sets like the census, the ABS is really valuable, but it's often not dynamic enough to be relevant when looking at how quickly uh, neighbourhoods are changing. So census data is, is currently a couple of years old yeah, and cities definitely. are changing faster than that. So it's the real time quality of, of what we can now do with social data that that's super powerful. Right. So who exactly is using your data now? 
Yeah, so we work closely with the property sector and also government. So we work with city makers, um, but what the, the big challenge that the property sector is facing is the market is really moving towards experience, where people no longer are interested in just buying an apartment. They want to buy into the neighbourhood and the experience of that neighbourhood. Uh, equally, retail is moving away from bricks and mortar retail, uh, bricks and mortar stores, and towards the kinds of experiences and events that are on offer. Now, without social data, it's very difficult to predict what trends are occurring and what's valuable about neighbourhoods. So we've found really fast uptake from the property sector. We've, we've now got um, customers across nine countries in the world. It's interesting because um, on, the, on the day that we're speaking to you, we were looking at um, figures in our newsroom today from Mission Australia. It shows mm. almost half of Australian women feel unsafe being alone at night, yeah. basically walking through our cities. Now, we, we live in a pretty safe country, so that sounds surprisingly high to me. Is this the kind of data that can help us um, try and deal with those sorts of problems? Because as people from Mission Australia are pointing out, the, the more unsafe you mm. feel in your own community, the less connected you are to it. Yeah, and that's an issue that we're really passionate about. I mean, the, the most of the way that safety is reported is through crime statistics, but that's a very inadequate measure of your perception of safety. Um, and, and we also know that 80% of family violence uh, cases go unreported. So the kinds of data that we can pick up, look at how act, look at proxies for how active neighbourhoods are, where you're likely to feel safe based on whether or not businesses are open, what their opening hours are, how busy places are. These things are proxies for how safe you're likely to feel feel so we start to begin to get a picture of the real full experience of a neighborhood which means that decision makers like property developers town planners can make more effective uh, decisions on how they might resolve those problems mm. and I, I know a lot of people will point out when talking about your companies you know typically um, urban design is a male dominated industry so you guys are a standout anyway but it does kind of go to that point that you know really cities are often planned by men for men and it's a reason why we get some of these statistics in some ways look there's lots of reasons but uh, it does kind of add to the kind of the depth of that story I think um, so what's next for Navalytics we heard you talking about how tough it is to uh, to grow your team get the, the best people what's that about yeah. why it's so tough yeah, we're, we're in a very fortunate position that we have a huge market interest. We have a long list of clients and a lot of others are waiting to work with us, which is a great problem to have as a, as a new business and a, and a rapidly growing business. Mm. But it means we need to grow our team as quickly as we can. And we're breaking new ground all the time, not just in the fact that we're the first of our kind around the world to use this data in this way from a place-based city focus approach. Uh, and so finding the expertise to be able to do that is hard. It's not that those people are already working somewhere else. They need to, to train and, and and develop that IP in-house with us. Um, but also, uh, the property sector isn't used to self-serving data. So typically, they require, they rely on analysts to tell them what the data means, and we're creating a tool that allows them to use it themselves. So it needs to be really easy to use, really highly graphic, easy to print out, easy to digest, and that's tricky as well. And so we're growing uh, as quickly as we can the best team around that. Uh, we're just in the process of, of closing a, a significant investment round as a seed round, um, which gives us the capital to be able to do that. So it's super exciting. Oh, stars on River Pitch last night. Uh, look out for these guys in future weeks. But, you know, stars in the startup world as well. There's um, so much hype around you guys and what you're doing. Well done. And uh, you're certainly a feature of um, some Women's Day events last week as well, International Women's Day. Well done, guys. And uh, all Thanks, the best. Sarah. Thank, Thank you. you, Brooke. Thank you. Yeah, next Tuesday, tune in because that'll be the next episode of River Pitch, uh, which is 7.30 on Your Money on Tuesdays here. Yeah. So keep up to date with that program. Yes, Just it, one example of the absolute <coughs> stars we're finding with that show. Certainly is. Plenty more fantastic businesses to keep an eye on too. Now, after the break here,